Nine out of ten, part three. That's what this uh, video is about. And this one, um, I've been going through or looking at this two separate statements by Jesus Christ that seem to contradict, but when you keep them within their context, they make obviously perfect sense. In Luke 9, verse 49... Uh, John answered and said, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him because he followeth not with us. He's not in our camp. He don't agree with us. He don't believe the same thing as we do. Well, Jesus said unto him, Forbid him not, for he that is not against us is for us. Okay, and so... There's that statement. Now, here's the, the contradictory statement if you pull them both out of the context. In Luke eleven twenty three, 23, it says, He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth. Okay, so one statement, the implications are, he doesn't have to agree with us 100%. The other statement is, he does have to agree with us 100%. Okay, and so we're looking at 9 out of 10 ain't bad. So in basketball, 9 out of 10 is pretty good, really good, okay? And bowling, 9 out of 10 is pretty bad, really bad, <laughs> okay? And... It's interesting when you read Paul's writings. Uh, in Romans, you start off at the beginning of the letter. You know, he reveals the wrath of God against sinfulness of man. And then he gives a remedy at the end of chapter 3. And the remedy is justification by grace through faith, imputed righteousness as a result of the shed blood of the Lord Jesus in chapter 3 verse in chapter 4 is imputed righteousness and chapter 5 is in, is uh, justification and then chapter 6 7 and 8 he deals with your personal walk with God how to become sanctified how to clean up your life well then 9 10 11 he deals with Israel okay and then chapter 12 he goes back to cleaning up your personal life, you know, as far as uh, sanctification and service. And then in chapter 14, he, he gets into the idea, what do you do about the differences that people have in their beliefs? Okay, I mean, we're all different, totally unique individuals, and we have different upbringings. Okay, and I have been blessed with a wonderful upbringing and with wonderful parents and everything. And, uh, but not too many people have that wonderful benefit. My wife was a wonderful upbringing, okay, where both of us only remember our parents arguing one time. In my upbringing, I remember my parents arguing one time. Now, I know they had disagreements, but they kept it private. And the same with my wife. She only remembers her parents. Now, as we got older, we know that they disagree with each other because that's the way we are. That's people. We're individuals. So what do you do with the differences that you have in beliefs? Romans 14 reveals the standard reaction. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to deal with the standard reaction, which is the wrong reaction that we have. In Romans 14, 1, him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. Disputing, arguing. I can't believe you don't agree with me. Okay, now weak in the faith, you know, this is a general principle here, or we could apply it to be weak in a certain topic. Okay, where this party wants to bring up this top topic and where they've, they've really searched it out and studied it, and this other party is weak in that topic. And so what's the reaction going to be? Should be, it should be, you know, where we're going to brainstorm together and try to search this out if you want to. Now, me personally, if, if there's a topic that crosses my path, that may be unusual or strange, as the Bible would say. If I only get one witness of that topic, I probably will shelve it and not come back to it, or maybe come back to it later. 
If I get a second or third witness about the same topic, usually within a week, oh, it's like, to me, it's like the Lord saying, hey, you need to look into this. And so I'll look into it. Okay, in verse 1, not to doubtful disputation. Disputing, that's the standard reaction. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. You see, when emotions are high, intelligence is low. You ought to be able to sit down and talk to anybody about anything. I don't care how outlandish you think their idea is. You know, I try, you know, I watched this video of a, a black man who attended KKK rallies. In fact, he went to the home of the head poobah, the Grand Master, and they became friends. But the reason why he went is he was trying to understand their mindset. Why do they think like this? And he heard them, all their insults and everything, and just kept coming back. And eventually, this man sort of won over the white man, and the white man left the KKK. Now, why can't Christians do something like that and relax? There's a great video I would dare say you want to watch if you can find it. And you can find it on YouTube. Jordan Peterson being interviewed by a, a leftist media outlet. And I think her name is Kathy Newman. You ought to watch that, man. It's about a 30-minute thing. You can find it. And the way he relaxed and answered her questions... That was a classic biblical reaction of uh, bringing up a controversial topic. Controversial. Who cares? Okay, Romans 14.1. Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputation, not with the intent... Oh, I'm going to enlighten this guy with my great beliefs. Okay, verse 2. For, he, for one believe that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. So he's bringing up the topic here is diet. Okay, that's the topic. What you're going to eat. Okay, let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. So there's usually... One attitude, the one who believes that they are well-versed in the topic will despise the reaction, despise the one who, you should know better than that, will despise them. And let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth. Then the one who's weak in the topic will look at, oh, you think you know everything, you think you're right about everything, you know, you're so judgmental. And then it says, for God hath received him. Okay, like when I'm on a street holding a Bible verse sign or doing a little street preaching, well, we'll have Christians come up and criticize us, and we'll have a few come up and, and are blessed. And I accept the uh, either one, consider both. You know, and if, let's say one comes up and they quote from an NIV or they have an NIV, you know, I'm not going to rail on that at the time. If, if uh, we get into that discussion, I'll gently discuss it. I might ask, hey, would you read a, a Bible verse that's a blessing to me? And I'll give them one I, that I know is missing. And I've done this on many occasions. You know, where like in a truck stop ministry or something like that, where I, I won't tell them that the NIV is a piece of trash, I'll say to them, oh, you got a Bible, great, wonderful. Uh, and I'll ask them to read a verse that I know is missing and let them look it up and find out that it's missing. And then I'll say, wow, that must be a misprint. And I'll give them a second one that I know is missing and a third one. And I'm hoping that they begin to ask a question about it. I don't despise them. I don't judge them. I don't rail on them. Why? God's received them. You see, and so there's different ways of trying to reach out to people. And then here's what he, Paul said in Romans 14, 4, Who art thou that judges another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. You say, well, he's wrong. 
Oh, so your anger, which is now wrong, two wrongs make a right? Okay, if he's wrong, he's going to answer to God for it. Well, you say, well, you should tell him. Well, what if God doesn't want me to tell him? You know, uh, you know, I might bring it up or I might not. Then it says, yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Okay, some, some of you Christians think that, uh, you know, you got to keep the Sabbath. Well, I don't believe that. I'm fully persuaded I don't have to keep the Jewish holiday. Now, if you think you do, fine. No skin off my nose. Now, if you're going to try to cram it down my throat, okay, then we're going to have a discussion, a gentle discussion. It says, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. There we go. There's the, there's the goal for each and every one of us. Are you fully persuaded? Okay, if you're not, then, then study more. Study more. Most of the time, the standard reaction is contention. One party despises one party, and the other party thinks the other one's judgmental. And then one might come out and say, well, I have righteous anger. Right. Sure you do. I'm sure you do. In James 1, verse 20, it says, The wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. And it says in Proverbs 13, 10, Only by pride cometh contention. Uh, you know, when I get in discussion with anybody about any topic on the street or in their home, or depending on their age, if they're older than me, you're not going to hear me rebuke them. I don't care who they are. Why? Because in 1 Timothy 5, it says, rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father. Oh, you ever think about that? You see, if a person desires a discussion, I'm glad to talk about it. And I'm glad to let them talk and listen to them. And when I listen to them talk and they're trying to tell me what they believe, I might ask a question here and there. I say, it just doesn't bear witness with my spirit to be absolutely true. And I'm trying to ask them a question, trying to get them to think. Okay, and so Paul's attitude toward the Lord is the Lord Jesus was gentle and meek. And I do believe those are two of the nine fruit of the Spirit. Why is it that people get so bent out of shape about beliefs? I had somebody email me about James. And in the reference Bible, I believe that the author of James is the Apostle James. One of the big three, Peter, James, and John. Not the other James, but James the Apostle. So it had to be written before Acts 12. And a, and a party wrote me and said, man, we got a war at our church. And I'm like, over that? Are you kidding? What is this, church based on drama? Drama, you know, emotions and all that stuff? Who cares? I mean, don't take yourself so seriously. When people are like that, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 1, it says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as babies in Christ. Babies fuss about little things and kids. He says, I fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able, for ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? You know, a church or a pastor who's a little bully or a manipulator, you know, drama seems to be the norm. Drama, drama, drama. Why, why do they get drama? You see, you could be young once, but immature all your life. You know, if your way, if it's not your way, it's the highway, man, I hope you don't get married. I mean, what a thing. I mean, you got to have some patience with people, and you got to have people have liberty. If your pastor's one like, well, I'm the man of God. I'm the man. I believe in pastoral authority. A little insecure, aren't you? A little insecure. You know, every man who's born again is a man of God. 
It was a common people that heard him gladly. Jesus Christ hates the idea of the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, where you have a clergy and a laity. You see, I believe truth is like food for the soul. There's a common saying, here's food for thought. And Job, this is written in the book of Job, Job chapter 6, verse 30. Here, here's a verification that that is true. Okay, in Job 6.30, it says, Is there iniquity in my tongue? Cannot my taste discern perverse things? Okay, can I taste, if, can my tongue taste uh, something? Oh, man, that didn't taste good. Okay, in Job 12, verse 11, two questions are asked. It says, Doth not the ear try words? And the mouth taste meat. So words to the soul are like meat to the tongue. Three, the third time in Job 34 verse 3. For the ears try words as the mouth tasteth meat. So if you go to somebody's house and they serve you a fine meal. Okay. Or if you go to a church and you're getting fed some spiritual food. Okay, at the person's house, they got a 10-course meal. They got a meat and a vegetable and, you know, all this stuff laid out on the table. Okay, and, and 10, 10 I items on the table, and you didn't like one. Are you going to gripe about the one? You're going to point out to the host, well, I don't like that food. I don't like that broccoli. Well, thanks for your opinion, pal. Hey, do me a favor, write on a card, and I'll give it to somebody who cares about your opinion. You know, everybody's got opinions, everybody's got armpits, and usually both stink. But, you know, the idea is that, why is it that the Christian world, you got to point out, well, I don't agree with. Okay, so you don't agree with. Why don't you accept what you agree with? There's a fine line in a lot of this stuff. I'll tell you when you, quote, break fellowship with somebody. That's the next part. But if you're going to complain to the hostess of a meal about the one you didn't like, it's like somebody who complains to the teacher or preacher or pastor. Well, I don't think this is right what you said. I don't agree with you. <laughs> so? Doesn't matter. Can you be gracious and recognize that nine out of ten ain't bad? Hey, in this age of apostasy, if if your preacher claims a belief in the book, that's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, he may not be interpreting it right, and he may be a bully or a narcissist. There's times you do have to weigh the odds of what you should do. But, uh, I, you know, the standard, the standard reaction in, in the secular world, if somebody don't like the discussion, if they don't, if, if they, if they don't feel safe, oh, I don't feel safe in this environment. And so they got to censor the words as insecure, little twerps. And uh, the, the, the way they get out of it is, you're racist. I didn't even say anything about a race. You're a racist. In the Christian world, it's you're a heretic. So and so's a heretic. I don't agree with them. They're lost. They're lost and going to hell. One of these drama queens, I actually heard this drama queen king, whatever he is, say that if you listen to Peter Ruckman, you're lost. Well, I didn't know that was in the Bible. I didn't know that was a criteria of going to heaven or hell. <laughs> What is that insecure little twerp? That's all that it is. You know, you, they declare the nonconformer as a heretic. I mean, come on, 9 out of 10 ain't bad. 8 out of 10 ain't bad when you're dealing with beliefs. And so the thing is that Paul's reaction, Paul says in Romans chapter 14, we've got to have a gracious reaction. 
Consider the words. Don't worry about the personality. Is there a time you got to sort of leave a situation? Unfortunately, yeah, there is. But you personally, me personally, Jesus said, have salt in yourselves, but have peace one with another. I am firm in my belief, but not too so firm that I can't change my beliefs when I discover the Bible has revealed to me, hey, you were wrong here. You see? And just be fully persuaded in your own mind that something is true. That's what the Lord expects from us. You know, a lot of times, you know, I've I've been told on a few occasions, somebody said to me, well, I understand you're King James. And I said, well, yeah, a little bit. And they kind of laugh. You know, you ought to be able to learn truth from any source. You might be surprised who can speak the truth. You just might be. I would hope that you'd be an individual who is adamant for the truth, for you personally. And if you are fully persuaded about an idea, and when you give it to somebody else, that you're gracious in your giving to them, speaking the truth in love to them, and that you're not going to, quote, judgmental or despise or wag your finger at somebody because they didn't know something that you know. Oh, like all truth stops at your door. No, all truth stops at the door of the King James Bible. That's where the truth is at. And that's what we judge every word by is by the words of God.